Hello and welcome to video number seven in the series Mastering the Encosi System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the Encosi System Engineering Professional Exam. Video number seven covers the system analysis process, chapter 4.6. I am Lance Sherry and I will be your tour guide for this video. So the System Engineering Handbook developed by NCOSI has uh, a list of system lifecycle processes and activities. And these are structured approaches to manage the development of very complex systems in complex life cycles. The System Engineering Handbook has identified 59 system engineering lifecycle processes and activities. And those 59 uh, processes and activities have been categorized into seven groups. The topic of this video is system analysis process. It is in the technical processes in chapter four. The system analysis process is kind of an oddball process. It is a cross-cutting process, um, a means of performing quantitative assessment um, that is used to support the other technical processes. So, uh, for example, if you are doing a system uh, uh, design definition process and you've got two alternative architectures, system analysis process is the way that you would compare the different uh, architectures. So systems analysis process is kind of this cross-cutting process that's used in all the other processes. So the learning objectives are what is the purpose of system analysis process, uh, outputs, inputs, process activities, a, a quick discussion of quantitative assessment analyses, methods of analysis, example analyses, and then the content of the output of the system analysis process, which is called the system analysis report. As the handbook says, the purpose of the system analysis process is to provide a rigorous basis of data inf information for technical understanding to aid decision making across the life cycle. In plain language, it's a rigorous, a rigorous approach to decision making, a quantitative way to inform decisions in all the technical processes and activities. Um, so as you would expect, um, the output is a, something called the system analysis report. Um, the activities to do that are to get the information that's required to do the analysis, and the inputs are all the information that you would need to perform the, the analysis. So nothing too surprising in the way the handbook defines the outputs, inputs, and activities. Types of analysis that are conducted. Uh, first and foremost, uh, cost analysis. Everything is always about the money at the end of the day. And so tracking the costs and the budget um, so the, excuse me, not the budget, but checking the costs of the product is very important. Affordability analysis is another uh, type of analysis. Technical risk analysis um, obviously has to do with the safety of, and the, of the performance of the system. Feasibility analysis, effectiveness analysis, and critical quality characteristics. So those are all the kinds of analyses that would be uh, conducted under the uh, systems analysis process. Um, in, in plain language, you've got these uh, processes that are shown on the right hand side that you're familiar with at this point. And these uh, analyses are all conducted as part of the uh, business and uh, mission analysis, the stakeholder and so on uh, analysis. So some examples, uh, cost analysis, uh, you always want to estimate the life cycle costs. And so that would include the development, manufacturing, service, sales, customer utilization, maintenance, disposal, all of those costs would be captured in a full life cycle cost analysis. Within the life cycle cost analysis, typically the, the money is broken up into labor and non-labor categories. Technical risk analysis is very important, and this is the risk associated with the operation of the product. So uh, typically we look at the hierarchy of uh, risks associated with fatality, deaths, followed by injury, followed by property damage, followed by costs of operation. So those would establish the technical risks of a given design. 
Very important for system engineers is not to confuse technical risks with project risks. So project risks are things that affect schedule and budget and the quality of the product. And those are to do the, with the way the project is orchestrated. The technical risks are to do with the design of the system and result in the system operational performance. Effectiveness analysis is a very broad category um, and is kind of one of the mainstays of system engineering. Um, there's not enough time to do justice to the topic um, in this video, but basically there's two kinds of effectiveness that are measured. One is something called measures of effectiveness, MOEs. And so what you're trying to do there is establish mission objectives and then determine to what degree the system is able to meet those mission objectives. Um, the other kind is to do with the system itself, and that's the technical performance measures. And so here you've defined uh, characteristics of the system, uh, for example, weight or uh, power, heat load, um, endurance, range, and so on. And all of those are technical performance measures that can be captured and evaluated um, for effectiveness. So these trade-offs of measures of effective, effectiveness and technical performance measures are usually uh, evaluated to perform trade-offs of alternative designs or, um, or, or, or requirements definition. Um, so one of the challenges, of course, is always to define uh, the objectives and the criteria which are used to conduct the effectiveness analysis. To do these analyses, you have to go back and use the laws of engineering. So that's what engineers do, is we go back and use science, uh, scientific and engineering laws. And here's a long running list of uh, the kinds of models that are used to perform these systems analysis. Um, you know, physical st uh, models, structural models, behavior models, um, and then, um, of course, everything is based on, on mathematics. And in some cases, you, would, you might want to visualize the results in the form of a simulation or even build uh, prototypes. So that brings us to the end of this video on system analysis process. Um, here's a short quiz for you to take. Um, and uh, what you can do is um, pause the video and answer these questions. Under what group of processes and activities does the system analysis process fall under? What document is, um, do the system analysis are captured in? Give a definition of system analysis and then describe cost analysis, technical risk analysis, understand the difference between technical risk and project risk, describe effectiveness analysis, uh, what is an MOE and a TPM, okay. list example of five types of models that are used in this analysis. So um, put the video on hold and uh, see if you can answer these questions. And when you're done, you can run the video to the next slide. The next slide has the answers to, uh, to these questions. So you pause this and uh, check your answers. And when you're ready, you can go on to the next uh, slide. So that brings us to the end of the video of the systems analysis process. The next video is the implementation process, video number eight. And if you could, if you liked the video, if you could give us a thumbs up, we would much appreciate it.